Welcome back to the darkness. We have missed you so. Gather, children, for a tale of dungeons and douchebags. Presenting first our cast of characters, Ileana, the half-elf paladin. I'll do my best to fight alongside you. Thalia, the wood elf druid. I don't know if we can trust them. Ava, the turtle monk. Oh, good. You're an idiot. Lucian, the high elf cleric. Life is so short. What's the shame in having a little fun? And mass. The ASMR row. You must think you're quite clever. Let me assure you, you are not. A group of perfect strangers gathered together to fight against the encroaching death curse looming over the Forgotten Realms. In the course of their adventures, they struggled mightily, learned more about themselves, and grew into a family. But like every family, they had their spats. Yet whatever darkness has driven a wedge into the party is nothing compared to the darkness within Choked. For beneath the lost city of Omu lies a tomb of darkness and despair from which no soul can escape. And yet our heroes come to brave it if they don't kill each other first. <laughs> Let them try, for none will survive the Tomb of Annihilation. Last time on Dungeons and Douchebags, Tomb of Annihilation. Our heroes used some tactics this time, rather than deciding to sit at a choke point and get swarmed by a whole shit ton of newts. And flanked the newts in their smelting chamber, picking them off one by one. Luckily for our heroes, it seemed they had done a great deal of damage the last time they were down here, managing to all but exterminate the giant striders, and taking out most of the newt grunts. The fire newt warlocks, now down on the ground with the rest of their grunts, proved similarly easy to take down, although one provided a fair bit of trouble when he decided to remain back in the workshops rather than on the smelting floor. Did I say a bit of trouble? Well, I might have been underselling that a little bit. After a bit of confusion involving a sphere of silence and trying to determine how many newts there were actually left, Hugh Hackenstone charged in after Taban. Unfortunately, Hugh Hackenstone was not nearly as resilient and fell to a barrage of scorching rays and blades of the fire newts. His body going up in flames is a sure sign that there was no saving him. And there was much rejoicing. Finally, I regain my title as the hardest and most grating voice in all of Tomb of Annihilation. Oh yeah, and they killed the rest of the newts, I guess. Or did they kill all the newts? What other puzzles await in Hrakmar? Will anyone bother to try and remember Hugh Hackenstone, besides Ileana, who, you know, kinda does that thing, it's her deal? Two men tonight to find out on Dungeons and Douchebags, Tomb of Annihilation. Hello, everybody, and welcome to tonight's episode of Dungeons and Douchebags, Tomb of Annihilation. Uh, we, for those of you watching live, noticed that we skipped a pre-show. Uh, it's just time allowing. We're going to gloss over that tonight. Sorry, you missed it. There will be a post-show for those of you who are live. So, hey, tune in for that. This is a thing. I'm keeping this a thing. And it, was in the, it was in the recap, so it's a thing still. I also appreciate that, Alex. Thank you for doing that. Uh, You're welcome. <laughs> so stay tuned, everybody. Um, welcome back. Uh, I was not present last time, but I am here today to continue our saga of soulmongering, sadness, and silliness. So, yeah. Um, without further ado, I am, of course, joined by the lovely bunch of folks over here at Internet Remix Land, the incomparable Alex Beckham. Running six NPCs and a like 
three dozen fire newts is hard. Mm-hmm, the squeaky Kristen. I'm not squeaky. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, the very tired... Oh, sorry. The everlasting exhaustion of Cammy Cat. I don't spill the tea, honey. I just drink it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the... Uns I'm trying to... I can't... I'm, I'm not even going to try to do alliteration. Just uprising attorney. Woof. I don't... I don't get an adjective at all. Uh, the unsullied <laughs> uprising attorney. Okay, that sucks. I was gonna say <laughs> the ultimate, the I, ultimate, ultimate uprising attorney. Fucking finally, okay, I was gonna sing Mamma Mia. The ubiquitous uprising attorney. <laughs> it's just not in the spirit anymore. I can't fucking do it anymore. That's fair. Aww. And the uh, the uh, attentive Atwis. <laughs> Sad dude. Sad dude. <laughs> Sad dude. Sad dude. Uh, welcome everybody, welcome back, uh, we are going to resume, and yeah, without further ado, we should just hop right into the game, because why not? Remember Camp Streamix! Remember Camp Streamix, that's a thing that's happening! Hey guys, it's Camp Streamix time, and you know what that means? It means donate to my team, or you're a dead motherfucker! Uh, <laughs> oh no! Don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, here's, here's the incentives for each team. <laughs> team Murder, you spin a wheel. Team Fallen, you draw a card. Team Annihilation, Xander doesn't come what? to your house and fucking doesn't stab come you. To your house. You're, we're still trying wait. to make sure Mia doesn't die. Yeah, exactly. Wait, well, wait, wait. that's a thing still. We don't have a counter for it anymore because it broke, I think, and it just doesn't work anymore. That was so over percentages that it just, like, doesn't function anymore. Um, so Mia's fine. Now we need a new <laughs> donation incentive. I don't know what that is yet, but just keep donating for Mia. And also remember, if you want to give points to Team Annihilation, you can do that by actually donating bits or hard cold cash or, you know, submitting fan art. Because, you guys, I have a fan art shaped hole in my heart. Uh, I always love seeing tomb fan art and I don't see nearly enough of it in my life. So please help me, help me live live a bit longer by feeding my life force pure fan art energy or you can make fan fictions it gives me points help me out here give a guy a f give a guy a hand and i won't in the words of other people here come to your house and kill you you said that i did not say that i believe it was atwis who said that no technically didn't say anything through that whole Oh. Who oh, said? Uh, who made the comment about me coming to your house in the middle of the night and killing you? That was Alexander. Yeah, no, I said, I said, Alex or you're a dead so motherfucker. Similar. I said, or you're a dead motherfucker. Somebody else said Xander won't come to your house in the middle of the night and stab you. I said it was Alex. I was saying, like, it was me. I've been saying it was me the whole fucking time. <laughs> I wonder who could have. Who said that? Uh, don't like, murder. please. Someone speak who up. Who could it be? Someone speak up. I can't. I can't believe that I continue to roll natural 20s in stealth. <laughs> <laughs> you keep throwing, at, like, just, just the- Oh god, he's in the code. Yeah. He's in the code. He's in the code. Uh, I will say, um, if you make fan art, fan work, any- it, It's just IR related. You don't have to make something for Tomb of Annihilation for it to count toward points. The idea is- if you win the fan work contest for that week, you can mm. decide which points to get to. So you mm. could be, a, you could like make, in theory, you could make Tomb of Annihilation art and then win and then stab us in the fucking back and give the money to someone else. Indeed. Uh, furthermore, there's no but, money. Yeah. Furthermore, and more importantly, um, <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to announce this live on stream tonight. I've told no one this. I'm doing it moment of because I decided it's an incentive. If two Team Annihilation wins Camp Streamix, something in game will happen that will be tremendously awesome. Just, just think of, just let that okay, simmer. Oh something. no. Something. If I win, something tremendously fantastic will happen to the cast. It's not going to be their doom. It'll be actually something insanely amazing that I've maybe thought about doing before, but I haven't actually done yet. Uh, but it will happen for sure. You can speculate on that. It may or may not involve something to do with the ultimate plot, but who knows? Who knows? It may not. It may involve the afterlife. Mm. Who knows? Who knows? But whatever. If you want to find that out, if you help us get there, maybe we'll see it. So think about that. Think about that. Um. But yeah, with that in mind, we should totally play Tomb of Annihilation. So, yes. uh, yes, the group just left off. You guys have fought very hard to kill the fire newt menace uh so far 
Uh, unfortunately, you lost Hugh Hackenstone. What a tragedy. Yay! What do you mean, Darn. unfortunately? We, I'll like, never, partied. Never gonna have to do that voice ever again. Um, We're gonna Fortnite dance on his grave. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, um... You know, so thank you again, Alex, for running last week. So, uh, yeah, you guys are here. What do you want to do? You guys are just standing in the various sides. I want to check on Azaka. Azaka left, didn't uh, she? She's yeah, she, yeah, we she, she got back. out. But yeah, I want to. Yeah, she got out. I think I'd like to check around and see if there's anything interesting. I want to in look this... for some money. I'm fucking Yeah, broke. look for some We're going to need supplies soon. Yeah. That's a good yeah. idea. We should loot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you guys are currently in like the wait. The, where's the, the map? Well, it theater of the mind right now because I don't want to maneuver the map right now because it's just describing the current environment without having to like dungeon crawl it. Um, because you know nothing new is coming up because you guys are just like looting through shit. Um, you guys are just currently in those side chambers off the main smelting room. These are like forging rooms. Like these have, you know, anvils and uh, places where metals are currently sitting in their molten states waiting to be shaped into ingots and whatnot, into other weapons. Um, that's currently, you know, where you guys are. Um, and the silver basins are full of this, like, silvery-looking molten metal, um, as well as just these work tables of hammers and, uh, forge, forging tools. Essentially, there's, like, enough equipment around here that you could passively assemble a few smithing tools, I would allow, for anyone who's interested in that. Um, but yeah, and then there's doors that lead off, you know, deeper into Krakamar. Um, Yeah. Do any of us know how to smith? Cause ha ha ha! Excellent question. I Can't don't say believe you do. I don't believe any of you have smithing proficiency. That's a no from me, dog. Yeah. Nope. Okay. Well, I mean, if there's a lack of smithing ability, are there any finished works perhaps lying around? Uh, yeah. nothing of value that you see. There's a lot of just kind of like. So, like, there's, so it's there's, a lot of shit to us. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of shit to you. There's nothing of value to be found here. Um, I will say, I'm not sure if we've established this before, but I'll have I'll have it be checked out again just to look at it. Um, this doesn't require a roll. Just narrate this. Um, the p m m pools, like the little basins, that are full of what looks like molten silver. Aren't molten silver? That's molten adamantium. Oh, mm. yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, that does hint at the fact that there is at it, uh, clearly, like, the, the, the equipment around here does not look like these things are being shaped into adamantine, um, weaponry. A lot of, like, the things that are, like, like it looks like it has been, like, shaped into, like, adamantine ingots. The more is kind of, like, the the, the, the tool vibe going on around here, but there's no ingots in sight. Hmm. Okay. And, uh, there are only, yeah, so there's, like, there's the, the, uh, and then there's the, um, the armory room, which is, which is on the map that first room you guys had to walk through from the smelting room to go into those, like, two southern, um, forging chambers. That does have, like, a bunch of gear in it if you guys haven't looted that already. We have yeah. not. We have not, not looted yeah. that. The last, th the last thing we did was kill some newt. Hell yeah. So, so yeah, the combat has just ended. Um... Yeah, I mean, if you guys want to check out the forgery, you're absolutely welcome to. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, it's, it's, it's the, like the, you know, it's like stockpiled weapons and armor, um, and most of it looks untouched, you know? It actually looks like in fairly decent condition, albeit like a little dusty, and you know, there's like a few cobwebs here and there. Um, I will fully list everything in here. Can I get someone who, like, a designated person to, like, take the notes of what's in here? Got it. Got it. Okay, cool. So, there are... These are all things of dwarven make, so they're fine and they're bulky, but, like, some of the most beautiful craftsmanship, both of form and function, that you guys have seen yet. Um, there are six battle axes. Um, six great axes. There's six of each of these, but I'm just gonna specify. Uh, six mauls. Six morning stars, six war picks, 
six war hammers, and six heavy crossbows. Um, these are all made of standard materials. Nothing, you know, there's no, like, these aren't adamantine. Um, there's also 200 crossbow bolts and four suits of dwarven half plate armor. Oh, That's what's located in the, in the, in the armory. All right. Yeah. <sighs> so if you want to take anything, you're more than welcome to. Uh, speaking of... Does any of it look like, uh, Mr. Gr in here? What was that? Sorry, your, your mic went you, all fuzzy. Yeah, you went very robot -y. Oh, shit. Um... Oh, you're good. Okay. Does any of this look like Grundy's weaponry? Uh, it does not. Okay. A, a lot of the weaponry you've seen so far of the albino dwarves looks like it was made from stuff found in the jungle. A lot of stone, a lot of wood, a lot of dinosaur bone. Um, it's because, from what you've seen, and, you know, Ava would know this information as well, uh, the albino dwarves, because they've lost Trakamar, um, you know, they're still as capable with their, you know, tool, like, with making things as ever. They just don't have the means of doing so in their more tribalistic um, survival forager lifestyle they have now. Um, part of the main reason why they want to reclaim Trakamar is so they can get back to making, like, things good and proper. Uh, but yeah, that's the armory. Well, those are all martial weapons, so no thank you. I will take 20 crossbow bolts, though. Go for it. Um, are we keeping track of ammunition? Um, I mean, if you, my opinion on that is if you want to keep track of like ammunition, if that is like a thing that you want to do, like that's what I mean. That's how I play personally as a uh, as a player. But if you don't really care about that, I'm not gonna like harass you about item management. That was kind of how I felt going into tomb. Like, oh, we're gonna keep track of ammunition and food and water. But ultimately, that just wasn't like super fun for streaming. So, at, you know, at your own discretion, do what you want, play however you want. Yeah, I don't use my bow very often anyway, so mm -hmm. I'm just gonna ignore that. Does Ileana have any ranged weaponry? <laughs> um, excellent question. I don't think she does. That is she I proficient in it is the better question. Paladins are proficient. She in is. It. Yeah, yes. paladins. Yeah, oh, you can, I'd you like can, a ranged weapon. Yeah, you can. T you can totally have a heavy crossbow. So be warned, heavy crossbows, as the name implies, are heavy. They require two hands to wield, and they also require, I believe, it is an action to load. Is that correct? Uh, I, because they 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 because a, a light crossbow is a bonus action to load it. I believe a heavy crossbow is just a full action. To reload in combat because you know it reloading a heavy crossbow it's one of those crossbows that require you to like put in like a mechanical like oh wedge god i don't know like, she needs that <laughs> it deals a nice amount of damage um however comma that sounds like a lot yeah <laughs> uh heavy crossbow deals uh d10 of piercing damage as opposed to the d8 of a light crossbow um so yeah up to you mm. Uh, no, I think heavy crossbow is just bonus action to reload. Yeah, is it? Yeah, okay, it's cool. just loading. Uh, because of the time required to load this weapon, you can fire only one piece of ammunition from it when you use an oh, action, yeah. bonus action. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. It's bonus action to reload. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. I'll do that. So you okay. can use multi-attack with heavy it. Heavy crossbow like... for Iliana. Hell yeah, go for it. Um, I mean, I mean, technically you could, if you have two attack actions, could, you can fire it. No, no, that's a, a rule of the loading property. Uh, oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Cool, cool, cool. All right, now fantastic. Have heavy crossbow. Yeah. And in regards of like, you know, ways to get deeper into Rakamar, um, like you guys have crossed the magma rift now. Like, so you've seen that there is more in Rakamar to the east of where you guys currently are. It's just like from what you guys have explored so far, it's all been stuff that's like isolated from any other passageways. So you know, DM being benevolent here, you get the idea that the only way to, like, proceed deeper in is from this current position, and there are only, like, two doors that you guys see that, le that like, lead off of where you currently are, and only one of them is open. Uh, the main kind of, like, forging room that has the crane that leans out over the molten iron pool in the smelting chamber has a closed door that has not been opened. However, um, the door in the southernmost forging chamber where a lot of the, um, like, it looks like a lot of the ingot, uh, you know, kind of smithing areas are, um, that has a door that is open because a lot of fire newts have been going in and out of there, um, during the combat. 
And, you know, the, the, the open door, you're looking through, leads off down a hallway, about four doors, two on each side that goes down this hallway, before opening back up to that uh, main magma rift, where there is an iron uh, balcony that looks out over the magma. Oh, uh, so where the warlocks sniped through. Yeah. Sniped through That's where you were sniped mm-hmm. from. Yeah, right. correct. So, well, our, our objective is to get adamantine, right? I mean, your, specifically, your objective was to clear, you know, to reclaim the mine from the fire newts. Um, mm-hmm. But also, maybe from, but uh, 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 the, uh, before that, you guys had been exploring to find adamantine uh, because of dealing with the gargoyles of Omu. That would be beneficial. That's um, like, that's like Thalia's objective because she doesn't really care about this climbing the mind she's more self-centered so i mean i guess if these weapons and and this stuff over here is implied to be made of adamantine we could get that or we could press further and see if there's ingots and stuff further down which there probably is so uh, I, mean, I would say going further down because everything here is just a uh, standard make i believe yeah yeah I mean, um, also, the dwarf lady did promise us ingots if we cleared out the the mine, so presumably there is some. Well, you know. That being said, here's a thought. Uh, so say we get this metal, how are we gonna make it into stuff we can use? Exactly. Yeah, we- none of us can actually use it. I, I imagine- the dwarves would have some knowledge of it. Yeah. But so that wasn't part of the promise. I mean, it wouldn't hurt to ask. Well, we it wouldn't hurt it because it's, it would be our only option. Yeah. I would say maybe it would be worthwhile to go deeper and see, just to make sure that there are no newts left. And, well, if we happen to find things along the way, then we find things along the way. Sure, we find the newts, we burn the nest, or... Freeze the nest, whatever the case may be. <laughs> I was gonna say, but so I think yeah. that might have the opposite effect. <laughs> yeah, sure, we make the nest more fertile by burning it, and then we freeze <laughs> it, and then we get out. The best best course of action here. <laughs> Logical A to B here. Do we have anything to freeze it, though? I, as, as long as we kill the fire, it doesn't fucking matter. Let's, let's uh, check out the stuff. Yeah, so, you know, in old school DM fashion, you got two doors in two different rooms. Uh, one is open, leads to a hallway that I already described, and one is closed, so you don't know what's beyond it. Pick the lock! <laughs> I just want to see the closed one. Are you, test- are, you, are, you testing the do- are you testing the door, Lucian? I'd like to. <laughs> All right, Eliana, you walk up to the door that is, you know, closed, and you open it. It is unlocked. Yay! Beyond oh, that, that you look down. Game. Yeah, you can see this like uh, this hallway that goes on uh, from your current position. It goes for about uh, I want to say it goes for about about thirty feet. Just this thirty foot long stone hallway cut through the mountain before it opens up back into the magma rift, where there is a stone mm-hmm. bridge that goes across the entire gap of the magma rift and leads off into uh, you know chambers deeper inside uh you know fr- from the light of the magma alone you can kind of see that where that you know on the other side of that bridge after a short hallway there's actually this like big grandiose looking uh door that has like two um suits of armor flanking it and also immediately mm-hmm. noticeable is as you open the door um in the hallway beyond here uh the hallway is completely featureless with the exception of this iron lever that's just sitting on the north wall 20 feet into the hallway. So, like, you know, roughly almost two-thirds of the way down the hallway there is there's this iron lever uh, Mm -hmm. that's currently in the down position. Okay. Well, has anybody else followed me in here? You just opened the door. Yeah, you just opened the door. You just opened the door. Oh, right, you're right. Yeah, oh you, this is what you see looking down. Okay. Well, well, I'm going to move out of the way so everyone else can see what's in front of it. Well, yeah, every, I, every, easily enough, everyone can see what's, a, what's ahead through this way. I see a lever. 
Let's not pull the lever or push it up. Let's not touch it unless we confirm that there's no traps or anything like that. Should we maybe get the dwarves? They probably know this place better than we do. We could, but we'd have to make it quick. I don't want to waste any time. Yeah, but making it quick is what, a quarter mile? Yeah, it's not Three quick. quarters of a mile each way. Yeah. yeah. So, probably not. We'll and have to save it. just might be safe. Yeah, just close- can we, can we close the door again and just make sure- let's not- let's not entice anybody to pull the lever. Actually, well, let's uh, down the other way. Cause this way has been traveled by dwarves, it looks like. What is down this pathway? Oh, the, great, GM. The, the pathway that you guys are looking through or the other door? The other door. The other door. Uh, as I open. explained, it was a hallway that goes down. You know, there's, there's, you know, four chambers, two on each side of the hallway that goes out to that, you know, iron balcony overlooking the magma where the warlocks shot down Lucian. Is it more natural than the, like, like more natural rock formations? I mean, the na the only natural rock formations you guys have seen has been, like, within, like, the tunnels or, like, well, rather not the tunnels, rather, because those were carved out, but, like, the magma rift itself. Like, these hallways all look like they are made from dwarves building down here. They're carved out of the mountainside, largely featureless, with the exception of, like, some, like, minor decals for the most part. Um, so both hallways, with the exception of there are doors in the side of the, the, you know, the other pathway, both hallways look, you know, both identical, basically. Okay. Yeah. So ultimately, it's up to where you guys want to go. Because that north hallway has, you know, it looks like it led to uh, a grandiose looking, you know, metal door. Uh, whereas from looking down this hallway, you know, you see a couple doors off the main hallway and then the iron balcony. Um, and because you guys have like traversed, uh, the, not like that area specifically, but like you guys kind of like saw it from where Lucian was, where you guys, where you guys were running away. Um, that iron balcony that this hallway looks like it connects to is, has no other connections to any other place uh, on the map other than, um, by means of, like, you know, hand over hand or, like, going, climbing up on top of this, um, this, like, rail pulley system where various, you know, clay, uh, clay vats are used for collecting, you know, molten metals and molten, you know, other liquids. Um, Do you actually mind pulling up the map for it? Because uh, this yeah, is kind of hard to picture. Yeah, we're just this title remote. screen. It's really hard to picture. Well, yeah. I'm going to do a little bit of it because I don't want to get too much self-reliant on the maps because it kind of slows things down. It's this map. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's that balcony I was telling you about. You know, that is. Can we is, just remove or... the shadows? Yeah, we have one more on or whatever. Well, can you, you can see that, right? No, uh, I all I can see is what my character the doors can are closed see for yep. us. Okay, fine, I'll turn well, it off. Well, I can see. All right, I'll turn <laughs> it off. Um, I'll just turn on dynamic lighting. Well, Yay! I would say that um, making sure that the making sure that the dead end that we know of, at least the balcony, is cleared out would probably be a good idea before we head out deeper into the towards the dorm. Hmm. Objections? No, no, sounds good to me. Uh, is that right. light mask? I think that is light mask. Or is that just light regular? mask? That's right. I, I moved mask uh, there originally, but regular mask is back here. Yeah. Oh, okay, because I'm like, why is he over there? Mask leans over. Why are you calling me light mask? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Is there some kind of dark mask I'm not aware of? Yeah, yeah light you, mask? You're very edgy. Ah. <laughs> uh, okay, well. Um, let's see here. Um, I'd, I'd like to go on in here and I guess check out these rooms, see what's in them. Yeah, there's nothing interesting about them. You know, they're basically just like storerooms that have been repurposed as uh, Fire Newt sleeping chambers. So they're full of a bunch of like piled up supplies, like uh, like bits of like leather and old forging gloves that, that have been formed into basically makeshift beds that are reeking of burning leather and, and fur. Um, but other than that, totally. like, there's, like, really nothing interesting about the stores. Uh, they contain, like, food, like, and, you know, leather aprons, protective goggles, parchment, ink, 
but it's all been like it looks mostly looted of all the important stuff and what is like mm-hmm. most of this clo- clo- clothing has been piled into the bed into the beds which are burned and ruined from fire newt sleeping on it right um hmm. well anyone have any strong opinions Honestly, it seems to me like the best thing to do would be to check out that door, because if there's going to be more fire newts, they're probably going to be behind the big shiny door. Assuming they managed to get it open, that is. That's true. They are, I can't say they're dumb, but also because they're all not here and they can't hear me, I'm going to say they're dumb. Let's see. Fuck. Hey, newts. <laughs> well, maybe they are here, we just can't see them. Are you implying there are invisible newts? I hope there were know, more locks. <laughs> at the way um, things are going, maybe. Question. Hmm. Does my divine sense work on warlocks or no? Nope, because that only works on fey, fiend, and undead and aberrations, I believe. Damn it! Of which fire newts are not. Damn it! They're just annoying. You win this round, fire newts. <laughs> they win every round. <laughs> okay, well, uh, why don't we inspect the door? I don't think there's much else to be gotten here. Unless so the we north corridor. Climb over to the other. Sorry, mask. Unless you wanted to climb over to the other side, I suppose you're right. Hmm. Well, one of these involves climbing, and the other involves walking across a perfectly safe bridge. A presumably perfectly safe bridge. I want to go with the perfectly safe bridge. Presumably. Pres- the presumably perfectly safe well, bridge. Thank um, you, Lucy. Before, before we do that, can I um, do lay on hands? Because um, Ava looks a little beat up. Oh, thank you. Yeah, let's let's go with... Ten. Oh, thanks. I mean, we could all just take a short rest or whatever. We do anything else? Can we do that? Do we? Can we? I mean, a short rest is like an hour. Oh, really? I thought it was shorter than that. Silly me. Nope. 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 Okay, never mind. Oh, well, thank paps, you. Paps lay, lays on hands. Ten points. Yeah. Oh, Yay. thanks. So you guys are going to that north corridor. Yeah. Well, cool. I'm turning dynamic lighting back on That's for this because I don't want anyone. I don't want the audience to see what's through the door. That's fair. Perfectly fair. But I will remove the things that you've already, you know, gone through. Um, let me turn that back on real quick. Uh, I'll patiently wait. wait for the thing to get covered up. <laughs> Sweet. I'm going for it. Everything's dark again. Elia is going to start on the bridge because she's like, wait. Um, it might be good to check and make sure that it's going to be safe for everybody, so, um, yeah. <laughs> Wheezes, but takes some steps. Uh, question. Is mm-hmm. the lever on the west side of the bridge, or across the bridge on the east side? It's on the side you guys are currently on, on the west side. Alright, um, I guess I want to just... Be observant as the hallway because Lucien has the inkling that this lever is hooked up to some sort of a defense system, perhaps. Mm-hmm. And so uh, he would be looking for evidence of like a pitfall or something like that, or the bridge being able to be raised or dropped or things such as you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Totally. Well, I mean, if you guys can move to the other side of the bridge, that's where the door is. Yeah, um, let's go to the dark. I like just inspect Why can't I move le- anymore? Can I just like inspect the lever, see if there's um, anything about it I don't can Don't know, do? it's your token, you should be able to click it. You wanna inspect the letter- lever? Um, I wanna I inspect, inspect the lever. Well, That's uh, a... Okay. Uh, you should be able to click your token just fine. No, no, yeah, I'm no, fine. Okay, I'm... my internet's just being stupid. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, oh you're fucking a cannon. Uh, yeah, make yeah, a- Yeah, my internet mm-hmm. is also being fucky. Make an investigation check, Abba. I have zero, but well. Yep, it's a lever. I read books. Yeah. I mean, yeah. At the other end of the bridge, uh, you know, it ends at this uh, large adamantine banded iron door, flanked by these two suits of dwarven armor. 
<laughs> they look like they may have been beautiful at a time, but they've been scarred by, like, weapons, scorched by fire, and just smeared with filth. Um, so, like, Ooh. functionally ruined at this point. Uh, and the door has these, like, two keyhole locks, you know, uh, in it, one above the other. Um, and then there's, like, this small little side cave that's just kind of off the side of the door. Um, that is just full of, like, detritus or detritus, depending on however you pronounce it. And bits of stone. Um, does anybody here speak Dwarvish or read Dwarvish? No. Just give me a moment. Nope. Nope. Well, then, uh, you guys would recognize these as Dwarven runes. You don't speak Dwarvish. Uh, the one guy who could is dead. Indeed. Yep. Details. Well. Uh, well, let me, I'd like to investigate the door. Okay. Make an investigation check. What the heck is this time? I'm How yelling a lot. You yawn. Natural oh, one. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Ileana, this is a wall. This is the most wally <laughs> wall. You think it's like, a, it's like a wall mural? You know, like they decorate it with like, you know, God. like little symbols and signs. And there's cool like dwarvish iconography on there. Like this is a cool little wall mural. Looks like it's a dead end though. Good lord. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the rest of you fully know that this is a door. <laughs> God's bless. <coughs> oh. Would would anyone else like to inspect the door? Because I have a very bad investigation. I think if we pull the lever and open the door. You Let's mean go. the wall? <laughs> the wall, right? The, it's the wall. Mm. Ah! Fuck it. I, I guess I'll investigate the door eventually. I have to okay. get a zero, right? Uh, okay. Why is Roll20 being so You look funny? over the door. I mean, it's a closed door with two locks. A top lock and a bottom lock, and each lock is shaped like a different dwarven rune. You can't read dwarvish, you don't know what they say, but you know that they're locks. Is there anything in the suits of armor? Uh, you rifle through the suits of armor, they're completely empty other than the frames that hold them upright. So this isn't a key underneath the welcome mat situation. Indeed, no. <laughs> I Damn. presume the fire would would have found that already. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe this is a problem for The door does look can... like there's a lot of, like, heavy weapon damage to it. Like, when I say heavy weapon damage, like, there's, like, a couple of scrapes and scorch marks. It looks like things were trying very desperately to break it down, but have failed. Welp. Mask, are you, are you gonna try and go for it? I could if you want to. Um, well, if you're up for it, and Lu Lucian sort of extends a hand, may I? Like, asking well, your yes. permission. Alright, he will cast uh, Guidance on you. Alright. Uh, first, Mask is gonna, like, inspect the locks, make sure, you know... They're just locks and nothing else is funky with them besides, you know, their dwarven runes and stuff. Okay, uh, make a perception check. Cool. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, the top lock, I mean, it looks like a, a straight up lock, you know? Um, it looks like it's it's all clear and good. However, very clearly, the lower lock is trapped. You can see it. Um, however, because you rolled so high, uh, it is a trap of, it, it is, it is a, it is dwarven design, and by its nature of how complex it is, it is impossible to disarm, impossible to bypass, if you, if you use your thieves tools. Okay, well, they trapped the bottom one. Great! Good. Does that mean it's fucked? That means I could do it, but I'm not sure what would happen if I, you know, don't manage to. Well, I mean, presumably this uh, whole thing belongs to the people who we were fighting the newts for. So... 
Maybe if we ask them nicely, they'll open it up. Perhaps. Doubt it. Probably not. Uh, sorry, what's in that side chamber to the north again? Uh, I mean, just looking inside of it, um, seemingly empty. Would I be able to look a little closer? Absolutely. Alright. Absolutely, no check required. Just the phrase, I look more closely, will suffice. Uh, yeah, there is this box tossed up in a corner in a bunch of, you know, stone, stone piles and all that. Cool. I'll yeah. take a look at that box, yeah. dude. It's a box made out of iron, um, resembles a book, you know, kind of like flat, and it has opens on both sides, you know, like the front and back cover of a book. Um, it, are there any, like, keyholes or anything? No, it's, 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 it's unlocked and open, it's just that there are just these two kind of, like, book-like openable covers on either side of it. Huh, interesting. Uh, I guess I'll sort of look in one of the covers if it's already open, see if there's anything Which inside. cover, front or back? Uh, front, I suppose. Cool. Yeah, you open it up. Uh, there is indeed a, um, a, uh, a shape, uh, engraved into it. Uh, like, it's in, like, an impression, um, uh, of, like, uh, of, like, a, a, a key embedded into that front side and on the inside cover of that there uh because they're the uh the the middle part where pages would usually be is where the impression is um and the the cover part on the inside has a rune that matches the top lock of the door and uh the back cover uh same deal there's a key impression on that side as well however the back cover matches the dwarven rune on the bottom lucy will just sort of hand the book to mask found something not sure if it's useful but uh seems to match it would if there were keys in here rather than you know just things shaped like keys that don't have any you know actual form to them Mm, very true i suppose that means well either the dwarves managed to take them with their exodus or some of the fire dudes have them well i'd assume if the fire dudes have them yeah, you're right, you're right. I mean, I'm sure they can work out how to use keys. You're right, you're absolutely right. I guess if we're really curious about the door... Uh... Hold on. I mean, um, it's... Still holding. Still holding. <laughs> I'm just I'm just thinking I have I one even holding. wild shape left, and I could turn into something really small to get in there and then get big again. There are <laughs> no <laughs> seams visible on the door. Uh, but there's a lock like a, a keyhole. Uh, I mean the locks are the only indentation on the, in them. However, I mean like I don't know. Ava, roll a history check. Alright. Because you're the walking encyclopedia of the group. <sighs> 21. 21. Dwarven design. You've read some books on dwarven crafts. Fine of dwarven I crafts have. direct from Orzor. I've read a book on everything. Uh, or, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. You've read a book once. Um, And dwarven locks, and based on what Mask was looking around by the complexity of it, um, they don't really actually lead. Like, it's kind of like they're really just kind of like self-contained locks. Like, it's not like a keyhole where there's an opening on the other side for it as well. It's kind of self-contained. So, really, if you if you were to be small and go in there, you'd really only find a whole bunch of mechanisms uh, and no discernible means of getting to the other side. Well... Yeah, I, I don't... I'm letting you know this because I don't want you to waste a wild shape. Okay. Yeah, not to well, mention... Well, fuck the door, then. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather not. Hey man, stranger seduction tactics have been used by this group, so that's You're not true. Wrong. Well, <laughs> let's just um move on, find another way. Yeah, let's uh, we'll 
I guess we can ask our dwarven friends about it later, because I do really want to know what's behind the big shiny door. So, no to trying to pick it right now. Given Not that right one now. of the locks is trapped, I don't want, you know, I, I don't mm. want you getting hurt. Well, I mean, you do have some guidance on you. Okay, we're gonna try you. it. Alright. I could at least try the top one, and if that fails, we move on. Alright. Sounds, Sounds good. fair. Okay. If you want to pick it, yeah. Absolutely make a Thieves' Tools check. In this cool. case, I'm going to have you use Dexterity. The standard. Um, dexterity, you know, plus whatever proficiency you have, and the Guidance. Alright. And adding Guidance... Okay, cool. Uh, you take out your thief tools and you fiddle around with that top lock. It's a very confusing mechanism, and the shape of it is very unique and bizarre. Uh, but after like a few you know minutes of fiddling, the sweat you know building on your brow underneath the mask, uh, you hear a satisfying little clicking clicking sound from within the top mechanism as you have unlocked that top mechanism. Got one. Very nice. Nice. Good job. Um, once again, if you don't mind, and Lucian will extend another hand. Very well. Cast Guidance again. And to, just to clarify, because you rolled very high perception, the trap in the lower lock cannot be, uh, you know, bypassed or disarmed. It's literally only, um, uh, it's literally only, like, it's, you have to maneuver very carefully around it. Um, and there is a chance that if you fuck it up, it will activate. Um, so it's not like even if you unlock it, it's going to activate. Um, it's more just like there's no way around it other than just by being very careful with your tools. And slipping up could fuck it up. So Right. The rest of you might want to step back. Okay. If you say so. So, go ahead and absolutely make another Thieves' Tools check. Alright. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> All the way across the bridge. Good lord. Yes. Uh, Alright. Everyone goes back across the Seems bridge. Seems kind of stupid. Okay, well, Lucian goes all the way back into the fucking forge room, dude. I'm not taking chances. <laughs> Roll 20 is being, like, extremely slow for me. Ileana, I can move Ileana. There we go. I'll keep the door open, though, so I can see what's going on. Alright. <laughs> Like, I was not going too far away from Mask because she's like, no, I need to be there if he needs to help. Actually, That's not all the way across the bridge, Ileana. <laughs> he said all the way across the bridge. Respect his wishes. Here, I'll, I'll move back so you can be in front of me. There. There. She's literally just like... <laughs> so She is ready to run across that bridge if anything goes wrong. Make a check, Mask. Cool. And adding guidance? Mm-hmm. She'd have to dash, but I think she'd make it. My three. So, this is a very long, tense moment, as the next couple of minutes, you are very delicately maneuvering your thieves' tools to pick this lock. All the while present of this trap mechanism that sits right in the middle of this lock and having to be able to rotate around. Again, more sweat beating on you from both the heat and just the intense amount of focus as your hands move very uh, deftly and carefully. Um, and there is a moment where your thieves' tools just suddenly touch the trap mechanism, and there is a, uh, a, a noticeable sound of a pin dropping as one of your sweat uh, beads just falls into the ground floor as everything just goes silent from you in that moment. However, you very carefully just course... With a little bit more fiddling, you hear another satisfying click, and you watch the door, just by nature of the mechanism, <laughs> pops in, uh, inward a bit more. Not fully opening, but unlocked and sitting slightly open. Door's open. You're exceptional. Holy fuck! Great, now we can finally oh, see what's goodness. in this piece of shit. Alright! Coming back over. 
Do you see what's in here? Huh. Oh, why is this being Impressive. So I it's starting to fuck up for me too. Weird. Um Yeah. Bizarre. You wanna go in first? I'll go Ye in first. Huh? Okay. You enter. Uh this leads into a small but actually impressive chamber. This seems to be some sort of treasury. Uh, and there is the stockpiled wealth of Hrakamar in this room. Thousands of iron and adamantine ingots stacked and neatly sorted and crated. Um, and at their top one crate in particular, there is this, you know, like adult dwarf sized gauntlet made out of pure gold that's just sitting upright Infinity Gauntlet style on one of the crates. <laughs> I was about to ask, how many slots for gems does it have? Uh, none, but <laughs> the rest well, of it looks <laughs> functionally identical. <laughs> so that's what's we in don't this have, room. We don't have to worry about money anymore. Uh, we. I mean, uh... here's the thing. We just fit. We just did this for that group of dwarves. Meaning, no, this stars. is. No, this is technically theirs, and also I think they might get pretty mad at us. Not that I Didn't comment. Not that I usually comment. Not that I usually comment on like player choice, like you know, like things that are in front of you. But I just want to comment. I think it'd be fucking hilarious. Not saying you should do this, just like you guys know that there is another way out of this mine because you've seen another tunnel that leads off. I mean, like functionally, the evil choice is there. You could totally rob these guys and just nope. leave. I know you're yeah, not. Yeah, but then we'd be leaving Azaka with them. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, we can't leave Azaka with them. There's Azaka, and then there's also the fact that if random people show up in any of the ports trying to sell adamantine, people will know where it came from. Also, yeah, yeah. without permission, heck yeah. They for do. the record, for the record, uh, I'll say that, you know, one of you, I'll leave it up to your own discretion to decide who, has some sticky fingers and just begins, like, picking up the ingots just idly just to, you know, feel them. Uh, the iron ingots are about 10 pounds in weight, nice and hefty. Uh, you walk over to an adamantine ingot, you know, roughly the same size as, um, as the iron ingots, and you pick it up, uh, it weighs only a pound. Huh. They are very light. Well, that's cool. Well, we can at least take some gold. There's no gold, I... just iron and adamantine. What about I, the gauntlet? They, oh, the gauntlet, yeah. They, yeah, the, I mean, the gauntlet. I don't, I... This is their stuff. They promised How us... How long do you think it's been since they opened the door? I don't know, but if it's theirs, I, I think it'd be wrong to take anything other than what they've offered. Doesn't I'd feel pretty... Like they'll miss it. And they offered the ingots, so... They offered the ingots... They didn't offer any fancy gauntlet. I'm not a dwarf. I can't use a gauntlet like yeah, that. So yeah, I it. mean, granted, yeah, I can't use it anyway. Is there anything I... about using a gauntlet? Yeah, we won't use it. I anticipate that if we try to sell something like this, word would get around. <laughs> Are we back? We're good? It no longer says, it no longer says attempting to reconnect. Okay, okay, and we are back. So that was, I think that was just Twitch fucking up. Or Streamlabs. Okay. Um. So that was bizarre. Okay. Cool. So, yeah. Everybody knows shit's fucked. Yeah, okay, welcome back everybody. Sorry that you missed a chunk of that. Not sure where that uh, fucked up, but basically the group talking about stuff. So, resume. Honestly, I don't know about you lot, but I would rather maybe have access to adamantine equipment than a gauntlet. Because some good armor would be very nice. Yes, that would be nice. Maybe... I don't think they would notice if we just took a few bars. Are there any sort of ledgers in the room? 
Uh, no. There exactly. are no ledgers. And if we do come across any, well, uh, we can just change it around. Well, if we get called out, we could just say that we brought it back as a uh, proof that we recovered. That works, See, right? You go. Exactly. Anyway, I'm going to continue looking this way, and as much as I hate to be a spoil sport, I do think that we should maybe make sure that there's nothing left in the eastern part of the mines. I know that there was some sort of a choking gas or something with the other. That it was just a room, just kind of full of steam. That's. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, it wasn't like a choking gas, just a room full of steam. It was mm -hmm. just smoke, trust me. Yeah, I sorry, smoke. Experience. Thank you. Right, of course. Um, and I mean, there's always, you know, trying to cross the lava chasm hand over hand over hand, which I'm not going to do, but other people are more than. Uh, I mean, I could probably do it. Nah, I'm sure there are other ways around. I didn't see any. I uh, yeah. I'm... Hopefully there are other ways around. Oh, only one way to find out. Uh, yeah. Lucian's gonna head back around, and while you guys are dealing with adamantine stuff, or if you want to take something, Lucian's actually just gonna do some, like, last rites and prayers over the body of, you know, Hugh, Hugh Hackenstone. Hugh Hackenstone. It's, only, it's <laughs> only right to do. The it's embers of Hugh Hackenstone. For. I'm adding 15 adamantine bars to my inventory. Amazing. Thalia, Thalia eats 15 pounds for breakfast. You're adding 15 uh, pounds of... So you're adding 15 adamantine bars to your inventory? Totally. You just pick up 15 bars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ten. What? Uh, this... This, this is... is what we do to survive. Uh, this Mask is, is getting 10. Yeah. This is what they offered as a reward, Ileana, and... We do need this for our quest. They did offer you 20 ingots, uh... Oh, 20? Um, yeah. Each. 20 ingots each. You guys were... Oh, uh, alright. Fuck. Eight. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm getting 20. Taking... okay yeah. right. Okay, let's yeah, just they, grab the 20. They then. did, right. like... Yeah. No, they, they, prom they did promise that, like, part of your, you know, reward would be that you guys would be given 20 ingots of adamantine each. As long as we're not taking more than we were... The question of theft is more so in the direction of... If you want to tempt taking more than was promised, no, that's up to you. I'm takes twenty one. I'm taking twenty. <laughs> Thali, I'll take are you, twenty. Are you grabbing another one? Nah, it just takes twenty. Okay. I don't want to. I want. I don't want to actually, because I know we're not actually technically dealing with weight, but I don't want to even think about it. Sure. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, just in terms of wealth, by the way, not that, like, you know, this converts currently to cold hard cash, just for personal reference, if you so desire, uh, a single uh, uh, adamantine ingot is, like, worth 10 gold, so nice. it's wow. about 200 gold worth of adamantine in your pockets. Great, I'm reforging my shit into actual weapons I can use rather than worrying about cold hard cash. Right? I'm like... I'm more concerned about weapons Give to get the fucking dope. soul know. monger that's, right now. That's where the rules kind of stump me. Because, for example, silvering um, a weapon, for example. Like, if you wanted to, like, you know, see, cause there, there's rules for, like, silvering or even coating things in adamantine, you know? But the problem with that is it, like, the for me, like, the math doesn't, like, super check out for how it works. Um... Because it's like, oh, it's, you know, it costs such and such money. I believe specifically it is, um, yeah, it costs, oh, actually, well, silvering costs it, like, um, a hundred gold pieces to coat a single weapon. Um, that's silver, though. I don't think there's, right. I think Xanathar's has Not rules, rules for, for adamantine. I think, no, I think Xanathar's has it. Um, okay. I'm gonna double check that very quickly. Yes, adamantine weapons in Xanathar's. Um, uh, 
Yeah, the adamantine version of a melee weapon or 10 pieces of ammunition cost 500 gold more than the normal weapon, whether the weapon or ammunition is made of metal or coated with it. Um, the problem that I see with that is that I think adamantine is it's like 500 gold worth. Um, like I said, the main problem I see with that is that sounds like market price. Like, you know, because adamantine is worth a lot. But, like, if you actually, like, 10 pounds, even though it's light, worth of ingots, you know... It's like 20 pounds worth of ingots. It's a lot of metal, you guys. It's a lot of metal, mm -hmm. you know? So it's it's a question of whether... And this is this is up to me as a DM, because it's, it's, this is kind of perplexed me in all the, the versions of this I've run. Is whether... I it, it is either the case of, since, you know, silvering weapons is 100 gold, whether 200 gold worth of adamantine could be used to coat your weapons, which would be all of your ingots per person to coat a single weapon. It's that argument of whether that should be allowed, or rather, it is 500 gold to silver your, uh, sorry, to, to coat your weapon in adamantine, in which case, multiple people would have to pool, you know, you know, like two, like, less than two and a half people would need to pool their ingots together in order, order to coat one thing, which, I, I, I have to, like, kind of, like, pro-con it a bit, because... You know, in that case, that is like, okay, cool, we have to decide who among us, the few among us, will have these special weapons, as opposed to the more, you know, the op the option of, like, everyone have adamantine weapons, um, by just having them expend their, their goods for that. Because, for me, it makes sense that coding... A weapon in adamantine would require double the amount it would require for silver just because it's such a strong and difficult metal. That makes sense to me. Um, and while I am, you know, the ultimate, you know, adjudicator on a lot of these rules, I am gonna give you guys this one to, like, kind of determine what would be more fun for you. The choice of having to determine who one person, or maybe even two, pushing the math limits there, is the bearer of these special weapons, or if you all get them. I will leave that up to you guys because the rules are finicky, whatever you guys think is most fun for you. Uh, does coding a weapon in adamant that change it from being like a, a simple weapon to something else? Because as a no, can only use it, it won't, weapons. it won't change, okay. it won't change proficiencies. It just kind of changes the metal with which is being utilized, which overcomes things like. Uh, resistances or immunities that some monsters have. Adamantine weapons aren't considered inherently magical, so it doesn't overcome magical resistances. However, it will come adamantine resistances. Also, adamantine is extremely strong against structures. So I believe any damage you deal to a structure with an adamantine weapon is an auto crit against that structure. Mm. So mean, you, ba uh... you basically get the siege property with them. That's epic. Oh. Yeah, because it, it's super hard metal and it deals extra damage to structures, so. I mean, I will say this entire universe is extremely unfair and we're probably all going to die the second we show up at that fucking tomb. So I'd like to at least have us all have a nice shiny weapon for us all to be fucking buried with. We're providing the materials, so I think that should give a discount over market price. Ah, good argument. I mean, does it have to be weapons? You can, uh, for the equivalent price, according to the rule book, you can coat ten pieces of ammunition. Does it have to be ammunition? <laughs> what, what are I you thought... hinting at here? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm more interested in armor than anything else, basically. Ah, uh, no, yeah, you guys don't even have um, remotely the requisite supplies to make armor with. Well, mm. I mean, somebody can use my share, I suppose. I don't really use too much in terms of my weaponry. <laughs> And Leona's I mean, right now looking at her at her hoard like <laughs> she might make a sword. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think that adamantine weapon crafting is very similar to how katanas are made, in that an incre uh, there's an incredible amount of skill involving folding the metal over itself and tempering that and shaping that. It's a complicated process. It's easier to coat a weapon than it is to make a weapon. So, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, I'd actually probably put it on my maze just as a backup, just in case sort of thing. I can't punch stone yet, so I'm gonna hit it really hard with a yeah. stick. If you want Wait, adamantine yet. armor, that's a lot more expensive. Um, 
You could, if you really wanted adamantine armor, Lucian. What I would allow, I know I'm, I'm speaking to the future here, and I know that I'm like, we're halting gameplay for this, but I feel like this is actually a worth discussion, um, is that I will allow, because I allowed this for my other game, and I think it makes sense. If, aside from the, the, uh, the adamantine you received from the dwarves, if you gave them equivalent money to whatever was left over, they would then take from their stores of adamantine to make the project. So in that case, the armor you would want would be worth the price of the armor plus 500. Um, and keep in mind that adamantine armor means any critical hit against you is turned into a normal hit. So, you know. That's nice. You, you got to kind of like weigh the pro and cons of the price versus the, you know, the function it gives you. Um, aside from just being very good armor and just being flashy as fuck, it does reduce critical hits against you. It, yeah. it, you can no longer be critted while wearing it. I'll think about it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. So I'm, I, I want to give you guys a little bit more time to think about this, and I think now is a good time to go on break. Okay. Um, to kind of, just so we can break down now, and everyone get some water. And all that fun stuff. Yeah. And also, you guys can think about this for a bit longer without slowing down the stream. So, stay tuned, everybody. We will be right back. Uh, don't go anywhere. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for bearing with the technical difficulties. You know, we appreciate that. So, we will be right back. See you soon. I, I, I forgot what screen we're turning this to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> intermission.
Hey everyone, welcome back to Tomb of Annihilation, where minutes before going live, the cast revealed to me that apparently brontosauruses aren't real dinosaurs. And my world <laughs> is shattered. I am devastated by this extreme loss that I have experienced in my life. Apparently brontosauruses were never real, and this was apparently common knowledge for dinosaur fans up until it got to me. Yep, so... <laughs> Dinosaurs aren't real. Fake fake fan. They're just a mix of a bunch of bones. Someone was in, wasn't in the Science Olympiad and it really shows. Yeah, you know, hashtag it really shows. It is genuinely saddening. The very first book I ever read on dinosaurs was a dinosaurus. It was All right, well, I'll drop some equally, you know, sh world-shattering news for those of you who don't know it. Koalas are functionally extinct now, so... No! Wait, functionally Good. extinct? It means that there's not enough of them left to repopulate. Oh, fuck. Yep, so you- well, <laughs> My world shattered, your world of, shattered. Let's play D&D. Anyway. They were kind of a mistake in evolution. They so. were. They That's were. True. But yeah, there's not enough of the koala population left to repopulate for another few generations, so... Bye, koalas! Anyway, Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Fuck. So long, and thanks for ha, all the eucalyptus. Ha, 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 ha. Alex found an article that says no koalas are not functionally extinct, but they are in trouble. So they're not dead yet. So we have a chance to finish this. We have a chance. <laughs> we have a chance to end it once and for all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so yeah. terrible. This time it's personal. <laughs> mask goes, it's time for Mask and Folly, and they go on a quest to exterminate all koalas. <laughs> To get the, like, gun cocking sound. <laughs> that koala has a gun. Um, <laughs> lips this. Oh my god, Kristen. Did you say eucalypt this? <laughs> somebody draw this. I want somebody to draw a koala pointing a gun and saying... <laughs> In a very 90s movie one-liner style, you can lip this. I couldn't <laughs> say that. It's a drawing. You know what I mean. With a fucking speech bubble. Jesus, artists. Fuck. If you get the right font, you can get it across. Exactly. And also, it's like, you can lip dash in all caps this. You know? <laughs> Creative thinking. It's um, true. Never heard of it. <laughs> Anyway, Dungeons and Dragons. We left Dungeons off and Dragons. talking about adamantine. <laughs> uh, so, uh, there's no need for the map right now, so I'm just gonna put it back on the landing page. We're Wee. free. Uh, we didn't actually come to any decisions. That's up to uh, you. <laughs> but I think I personally am good with us all getting an adam adamantines. Yeah, that would make sense since, again, we are providing okay. the materials. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then that is what I shall allow. Yay. Uh, I think we were also discussing checking that last cave just to make sure there aren't any more fucking newts. Alright. So actually, we need the map back. <laughs> uh, you don't because I'll promise you will find nothing. Okay, fuck it. <laughs> okay. There's nothing encounter-wise because the newts that were there fled. Oh, yay! We're too yay! good, baby. Yeah, and I don't mind revealing that out because yeah. So map is not needed. Um, basically, and I'm not gonna have people roll for this because it's just it would be it would be kind of pointless because it would just take up time and you know. There is a there is a risk, of course, of falling into the magma, but it's not. Uh, it would it's unless you like roll like you know, a natural one on a climbing check. You're not really in a bad place, um, and you guys have already been you know beaten by this place once. So I don't want to have you guys suddenly melted into a pool of magma. Uh, basically, the only other chamber that you guys would find in here uh, is an offshoot. It's kind of like a worshipping chamber where there is this big, um, five foot tall, like, statue made out of an assemblage of iron, copper, gold, and silver just hammered very crudely together into a form suggesting something vaguely humanoid but also wreathed with flames. Um, it looks very religious to the 
crude iconography of the fire newts. Cool. It's <laughs> basically it. Okay, well, let's go see how Azaka's doing. Yeah. Totally. Uh, yeah, you guys are just gonna head out. Yeah. Unless anyone else has, has anything they'd like to do. Well, oh, we good. did our job here, so I think we're done. We're all good. Alright, so you guys walk the length all the way back through the mine tunnels to get outside of Krakamar once more. I'm going to change the music because we're no longer inside <laughs> the creepy Yay. flaming caverns. Um, instead, we are out once more into the tropical jungle, even though technically it's a barren volcanic waste around here. I'm just going to use the, vol the the normal jungle playlist because oh, why not? Um, you guys get back outside. Same deal. The The albino dwarf encampment has encroached upon this entryway ever since you guys made your first delve in there. Um, and there are just guys all around who look expectantly at you as you exit the mines of Rockamar. Um, Sithy Vinecutter, the leader of the bunch, also just stands there, just openly staring. No words, just looking at you guys expectantly. You're all as comfortable as always. There's uh, a lot of blinking just as they look with no response. Uh, we killed them. Yep, we killed all your newts. Your newt problem is gone. Uh, Sithy Vinecutter gives a, sh a very curt nod and just says, Good. We are thankful. That's it. <laughs> you watch as, <laughs> without word or gesture, all the, the, the dwarves, except for, like, maybe three and Sithy, just turn on their heels, drop what they're doing, and walk into Hrakamar. Uh, oh. Um, just begin walking uh, in I'm there. A, like, awkwardly, like, shuffles it, like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, Sithy then stands there and says, As promised, you will receive 20 adamantine ingots between each of you. Furthermore, uh, she gestures to the three other dwarves beside her. She says, um, we will also lead you to the wreckage of a flying boat in the jungle. Oh, great. Uh, one more question. Uh, her uh, eyebrow just cocks up. I don't suppose any of you would be willing to help make that adamantine into, uh, weapon. Uh... Sithy kind of, like, looks at the other dwarves. You know, she raised, has an eyebrow raised. The other dwarves, in response, raise eyebrows. They all just kind of stand there with raised eyebrows. Um, I can't believe these dwarves speak the language of a raised eyebrow. In some sort of silent eyebrow speak between them. Um, it's like sign language, it's but like with your Morse eyebrows. Code. It's like a I was going to say it's Morse code. <laughs> I can't <laughs> yeah, believe... It's dot, I can't dot, believe... Dash, 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 dash. <laughs> I can't believe Dwarvish is actually learning the... Crazy. Amazing. Uh, so when dwarves are giving you the eyebrow eyes, they're not flirting with you. They're saying, excuse me, do you know where the bathroom is? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> huh. Um, yeah, after a moment of just kind of like looking and gesturing with their own eyebrows at one another, Sithy looks back at you guys and says, we think that is an equitable exchange. Awesome. Who's eating shit? Um, she says... Me. It will, uh, she says, um, if that is what you wish to exchange your ingots for, you will need to specify which you will be coating with adamantine. Uh, and furthermore, it will take a few days to accomplish your task. Uh, I'm willing to wait. You may wait if you wish. There are no places to sleep other than the cave floors. However, if you wish to travel elsewhere and come back within the next handful of days, you may also do that. Um, how far away is the flying boat from here? From here, uh, she looks at... Yeah, fuck it, why not? I'm gonna roll with this fucking joke. Uh... She looks again at the other uh, dwarves surrounding her, and they continue to speak with eyebrow wiggling. 
um, very intricate Jack Black levels of like eyebrow <laughs> wigg- wiggling between them. Um, and after some brief exchanges via the <laughs> via the uh, the the hairy version of Morse code, um, she uh, she says, "From here, it would take you about, according to my guide friends." is about a hundred a hundred and ten miles from here hmm sounds like a day trip anyway it's far off several day trips yes (laughs) day trip if we hurry (laughs) yes it will be completed in three days now and Cynthia like holds out her hand and says um you will give me your weapons now. What? Oh, right. That yeah. makes me sense. <laughs> oh, uh, no. All right. My baby. My sword. Uh, <laughs> Ava hands over her quarter staff and also her adamantine. Like, eh. <laughs> uh, when Sithy sees that you guys actually have the adamantine on you guys, um, her second eyebrow goes up <laughs> and she looks over at one of the dwarves um, and speak, actually speak something in dwarvish to them. Oh. The dwarves like run inside, uh, not like at a hurried pace, they just jog on in. Um, and she turns back to you. She looks at the weapon. She says, before any work is to be made, we need to ensure that you did not take any more adamantine than you were promised. Please, if you would not Ha-ha! mind showing me your pouches. <laughs> Understand. Eliana just nods until it pulls out her her share of adamantine and then and her long sword. Yeah, she examines everybody. Didn't determines, any, but he will offer the uh, book that he the metal book that he found the key in for. She looks over it and she nods, seemingly to know what it is. Doesn't comment on it, but nods and tucks it away. Um. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, uh, I don't think any of us took. Yeah, Mask more. only took twenty. I think Lucian took zero. Yeah, I only took twenty. Um, Sithy does comment on that. She says, uh, "There is twenty ingots unaccounted for. Are you not to take your share?" She says, "As looking at you, Lucian." Well, I figured I'd get it either way, either now or later. So... Yeah. Do you wish to have a weapon transformed? Quick mechanics question. Uh, yep. I was looking at my character sheet. What about a shield? Uh, that would be in the domain. I don't believe you can coat armor with adamantine. It has to be made okay. from it, and that would again. You can have them make it if you want to spend the extra money. Money I don't have. All right. Exactly. Uh, in that case, I'll sort of uh, I'll sort of nod and hand over my knees. Okay. And you handed her what? Sorry. Mace. Your mace. Okay. So everyone hands over. Uh, mask, what are you handing in? Rapier. Uh, Thalia? My longbow. And Kristen? Uh, quarterstaff. Great. Fucking metal Actually, quarterstaff. It's a that's, bow. that's awesome. Right? <laughs> it's gonna be fucking cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. So you guys hand in your weapons. So you guys are without these weapons until they complete the process of reforging them. So mm-hmm. I, you know, either you guys, if you guys have other weapons to use, basically this is in the in, in the domain of yes, I was. You have a question? Oh, um, I can wait. Okay, this is basically in the domain of uh, you guys can either go out and do something, in you know, for whatever, uh, with weapons in the interim, whatever's in your inventory, or if you don't want to risk being caught in the jungle with your pants down, um, just wait spending three days here you know up to you you know we gotta give it azaka time to cover anyway and i yeah. really yeah, i let's really give her time to recover. it's gonna take two days for her to get back to normal yeah yeah i'd rather a let azaka recover and b i don't want to fight the jungle with just my turtle fists That's how so terrible <laughs> you. How, how's uh Alex, or me, depending on... Maybe I've forgotten this, or maybe Alex, you did. Was any experience given out for the for the Fire Newton encounters? Yes. Uh, cool. yes. 
Was any given out for yesterday when you ran uh, the week before, or was it just the one I did? Uh, well, the one I did too. Um, okay, great. So I'm then not, we're all. I'm not sure if you gave experience for yours, but if you did, great. I believe I did because you guys were taking a long rest after that encounter. I believe I did. Yes, cool. you did. I remember. Oh, great. Cool. Excellent. So, so what does that mean? Are we still level five? I believe so. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I actually had a question. Uh, did our NPC friends, did they also get a share of Adamantine? Were they included in that deal? Uh, Azaka was. Uh, not Taban? Oh, yeah, Taban Taban too. was with us. Yeah. Cool. Speaking of Taban, just, sitting, just standing in the background flexing. <laughs> <laughs> he's, trying to be impressive. He's been watching the dwarf's eyebrow speak, and he's trying to do the same thing, but with his pecs. <laughs> Is it working? Uh, some of the dwarves look m m moderately offended. It's fun, I didn't know you were multilingual. <laughs> um, I think Taban responds to that just smiles and does a bunch of little peck twitches, so. God damn it. Lucien just like... nods. Sly little grin. Um, yeah. Absolutely. I think, I think we're taking a rest. <laughs> Azaka is full on, like, l like anime style, lying flat on her back on the ground, legs and arms splayed out, mouth fully agape, tongue hanging out, drooling and snoring like an earthquake. Good. Should we? I guess we should wait till she wakes up to see if she wants to put it in a man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, <laughs> she. You guys are not sure what state she's in, but in response to that, just a hand goes to one of her, uh, uh, goes to like one of her scimitars, and just holds up in the air, and her arm goes full noodle and just drops it, and she seems to be unresponsive again. Well, I'm going to take that as an answer. <laughs> All right. So I guess we all just pile the weapons and... <laughs> yeah, Sithy will take them. Yeah. And yeah, it'll take like two days for Azaka to lose her exhaustion. So if you guys just want to wait for three days, you can. Yeah, I think we're just gonna... Yeah. Yeah, I'll uh, probably use my spells to stock up on like food and water and stuff. Sounds good. So it is up. It's up to you guys then if you want to gloss over these three days or if there's any role play you want to do in the interim. I mean, once Azaka's awake, maybe we should talk to her. <laughs> Actually, um, do they have any sort of um people that could that, or any sort of like delivery system? Such or as like a letter. Uh, or like a letter. <laughs> a delivery system. I will let you fully try and persuade one of the dwarves to go off through the jungle with a letter in in their possession for you. Oh gosh, I don't want to send some guy out in danger because of me. These dwarves live out oh, here, no. they're fine. Um, That's I mean, yeah, they don't—they don't have like a—they don't have like a courier pigeon system out here. A uh, cur uh, courier toucan, toucan, uh, courier toucan system out here. But if you want to, if you really want to send a letter, um, you can totally try persuading one of them to do that for you. Or, Dolly, do you have animal messenger? Oh, uh, let me check. I and, might. Yeah, you uh, might. Well, druids prepare spells each day, so if you don't today, you can have it tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, fucking... I feel like Iliad has already written this one letter. Um... Also, wait, does anyone have the spell sending? I was about to say, and if that's not fast enough, if I know this person, <laughs> I could always just tell them whatever you want to say right away. Uh -huh. I mean, yeah, I don't have Animal <laughs> Messenger right now, but I can do it tomorrow. Oh, wait, Animal oh. Messenger, depending, I, I don't think would be... Like, where are you trying to send this message to, Eliana? I want to send a message to Larrick. Okay, totally. <laughs> this the animal messenger <laughs> would talk to him in a animal while. messenger would not work in this case, but sending totally would. So Lucy. I don't is... want to tell him what I want to say. Has Lucian met Fantasy Larry? No, he hasn't. Nobody's met Fantasy Larry. No, I don't think so. And I suppose I'd have to meet him to be familiar with him. Yeah. Because I'm yeah. because I'm in it for now. For the record, uh, 
Uh, I am willing, because this is in a roles depending. I will willing with a description of Larry and some heavy, heavy minor illusion magic to try and figure out exactly what he looks like, like sculpting a fucking head and then telling. I will stop you right there because Ileana's not going to just sit there and describe it. I know. I'm just saying, if I would allow Lucy to try and make an Arcana check to weave the spell, and it's like roughly like th just th blindly throwing a ball for the basket. <laughs> <laughs> so can can no, Thalia can she, can she, can can she win? Can well, Thalia it, make like a druid craft hedge in the shape of fantasy wow. fairy? You could, you totally could. You totally could. I don't want to make it. Never mind. We're speaking no, in hypothetical. Can we get so, to the city that can send it? So, Ileana, Lucy will sort of like guide her a little bit by the shoulder and walk a little aside. <laughs> And he sort of he sort of like uh, Uncle finds Denise. a place to sit down and pat pats pats the area next to him. He says, "So, family to family, tell me about this Leric fellow." <laughs> Thalia pops out of the bushes. You have to tell us. It's for your safety. <laughs> Thalia, she's an adult. She can take care of herself. But I am very interested. We both are. Yes, of course. And we're more than willing to help you. He's a man. He's in it for something. <laughs> Thalia, I am incensed well, that you would say such a thing. You know how men are. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> I'll just wait until we get to another city. No, it's no, fine. no. We might as well do it now. We have the time. If it's important, Ileana, then I'd like to help. Now, for the record, Ileana, just so you know how the spell works, you would not be the voice Larrick hears. It would be Lucy's voice. <laughs> well, she's definitely not doing that. Screw it. She's just going to wait until they, they find a better way to send it. But now we're having this scene, so we have to let it play out. Thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, finish the scene. Finish I mean... the scene, thought. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I mean, even if you don't want to send a message through me or through Thalia, I mean, I'm curious. You seem to think highly of him. How did you mean? It's, it's, it's not that big of a deal. We, I only just I helped him during one of the water deep mission thing. That 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 call letter, the help wanted in the city. Okay. If it's not that big of a deal, you wouldn't still be thinking about him. Uh -huh. Lucian like pauses to string together like these words that <laughs> weren't in sentences. So he's the one that you got the reward from. I didn't think you knew anyone in Schultz. I that. didn't. He just is from where he's just from my native city, so I wanted to help. Very noble of you. I say that with the utmost sincerity. It's very kind of you. You did mention something yeah. about a boat, didn't you? Yes, he's the one who I was going to get the bolt in Chult from. And... and that's it. I just wanted to let him know where I was and wait. what was going on. Wait, wait, wait. Lucien sort of turns to look at Thalia, then then turns back to Ileana, then looks at Thalia. Weren't you, Ileana? Weren't you all dressed up one day? Uh, back in Port Nanzaru. Wasn't... Oh, yes, yes that I was remember. when I went to go tell him what happened. Yes, and then you came back to the bar, you came back to the tavern all flustered. That's not important! And looking no, you right. did. Oh, goodness. Just... <sighs> <laughs> It's okay. I will totally say this, Lucian, because I'm <laughs> because ultimately what is D and D but what we find to be fun and ultimately the rules are whatever we think they should be. Like I said, and this is of course up to the the person who this is a is about, but Lucian, I will tell you this. I will allow for, a, one, an Arcana check to cast a setting spell to someone that you don't know. But by extension by that, depending on what you roll, 
will also allow you, by joining hands with, with Ilyana, to allow her to speak through you. That is an option. I will, I will give you that option of, of allowing you to spellcraft, depending on your arcana check, um, if you so desire. And if, and if Ilyana so desires, um, if she wishes to send the message, but in her own voice. Like I said, I will allow spellcrafting to be done, because for the sake of cool storytelling, ultimately up to y'all. But please, continue this scene. And also, oh, I can my guidance to help out. So, I won't... I don't want to bluster you too much. I mean, we can't have you passing out in all that armor. But there might be a way where we could manage you being able to talk to him using me as a, uh, I suppose, a conduit would be the best best term for it. A vessel. Um, well, I, I guess that'd be okay. Um, and of course, on my family name, and also, uh, I swear, on the, on the ever everlasting dominion of Kalembor, that if you don't want me to tell anyone what is said or heard, then I shall not. Well, I'm not going to be saying anything like that. Just. Um, Elian, I'm trying to make you feel more comfortable. Fine. All right. L Lucian will extend a palm, and then he sort of like, sort of like looks over his shoulder at Elian. Uh, sorry, at um Thalia. Um, you mentioned something about guidance. <laughs> yes, I don't want you to mess this up. She taps lie. his shoulder. Yeah, Ooh, all right. <laughs> if you want to spellcraft this. Um, I will make an arcana check. I will not disclose the consequences in advance, but make an arcana check. Oh boy, consequences could be pretty freaking silly, though. Oh boy! Waka waka! <laughs> Please, Let me roll, roll your my guidance. D4. A nine. <laughs> okay. So... Uh, you, you cast sending, it does not work. You are absolutely welcome to try again for the, with the spell slots, just so you know, but that casting of it wastes the spell slot and just fizzles out. Um, give me, I swear this doesn't usually happen, but I just give me another chance. Oh, off days. I was just sitting there like, hey. uh, all right, let me do my uh, thing. Fine, one more time, and then that's it. Plus guidance. Two. 16. Okay. That is high enough to cast, to get it to him. That is not high enough to ensure that uh, Cammy's, vo uh, Ileana's voice when that comes through. That's a coin toss now. So, the message will be sent. And after the message is formed, I will flip a coin, depending on the result, it might happen in Eliana's voice, or it might happen in another voice. We don't know if that's going to be Lucian's voice, or some other voice. So, that's amazing. but you guys don't know that. You just know, ah, oh, the spell worked, and the line is open, and you have 25 words on this message. Ilyana, of course, you get to determine what is said. You have 25 words. So. Feel free to count them out on your hand as you go, or take a minute to, to think of it. Uh, but yeah. Think of that will, good, good tweet that you will, gotta send. Fantasy it, <laughs> it will reach Fantasy Larry. That is the guarantee. <laughs> Last time on Tomb of Annihilation, we spent a, a harrowing Dear Fantasy Larry, I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> we spent a harrowing twenty minutes figuring out what Ileana was going to say to her God. totally not boyfriend. And guess what? No one else gets to hear it. 
Dear fantasy, Larry, oh, I love you. Literally, all it is is just, hello, it's just, it, this is Ileana, and I'm sent, like, basically she rewrote the beginning part to say, I'm using a spell for one of the members of my team. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know that I'm still okay. And we're still walking around trying to figure this out. But I didn't want to leave you not knowing where I was. So if you want to get a message back to me, just send it to, um, what was the nobleman's name again? Chult. So that's so over 25 words yeah. that as you're still Shut speaking, up. as you're still speaking, his response comes through. Because wow. he gets 25 words of that, it cuts off, he knows he can respond. So you still speak for, like, you know, another, from what I was counting, like, another good 15 words before he, this voice yeah. just comes through. By the way, let me flip a coin real quick. Um, <laughs> hey, Eliana, heads or tails? Oh, God, don't make me pick. Make hey, Lu me. hey, Lucy, and heads or tails? Heads. I dropped the coin. Hold on. I saw that. Fuck. Oh. Dropped it again, but I'm gonna just flip it with my hand this time. I'm really not good at flipping coins, you guys, but hey, but uh. You really aren't. <laughs> so, uh, as you're speaking, immediately Fantasy Larry's voice comes through. Um, could somebody, for the love of God, remind me, did he have an accent or was he just me in a deeper <laughs> timber? Because I forget. I uh, it was deeper timber. Okay, cool. Guy. Fantasy Larry responds immediately <laughs> with. Um, not that you guys would know this, but I'll illustrate this. I did not, I did not get a heads, so the voice was not Ilyana's, and, no! uh, <laughs> At least I said, don't worry, like, don't freak out. Yep. And the voice was very much so. So he roughly got, don't freak out, it's Ilyana, and about a couple sentences after that, uh, before he cuts in... <laughs> Saying, hear his voice, he says, Oh, hello. I didn't quite catch all of that, <laughs> but I can assume. Hello. <laughs> Glad to said, hear hello. you're safe. Um. <laughs> I'm trying to think of um. he, he has he has uh he has uh six more words. I'm trying to think of some. Um he says <laughs> and uh uh he says um hope your journey fares well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty five words. Wheezes. Yeah. Wheezes. Yeah. Uh question. Does Lucian hear any of it or not? Nah? Oh, you're the full conduit. You can hear the response. Does he make a face? Because Lucian just delicately arches an eyebrow and sort of like squeezes Ileana's hand before letting <laughs> Thalia sees this face and kind of assumes it did not go well. <laughs> she does want to tell it. She said so anyways. Like, <laughs> Let's go, like, okay, I'm ready, I'm ready to just, to so, just curl up now. Yeah, the sending spell is complete. God. So, um, how did it go? <laughs> Lucine shrugs and looks at Ileana. Ileana just covers her face. It's been fine. There you have it. <laughs> it went fine. Yes, it went fine. But how many times I could have expected? That doesn't usually mean very good. Well, <laughs> you tried. Um, well, at least that's a tide over until you can send a proper message, right? Yeah. Or right. Yeah, see? Easy, kid. It's alright. Next time we can actually have a a bird or something better. <sighs> Ileana. 
just I I see how it is. A man fails once and a half times at something and we'll never get a rest from it. <laughs> oh my gosh. But they are just sitting there like <laughs> I'm just beating him up, not you. I'm just trying to lighten the mood. <laughs> Go on, laugh. It's funny. It's all right. <laughs> See? <laughs> anyway, I will leave you to it and stop embarrassing you, although it is my God's given right to do so as your uncle. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's, after it's my... I drank from a can, I like to think that Lucian just full on finished a shot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where he's he got alcohol the shot on from, just... but it's just there. It's just there. <laughs> Conjures a shot. <laughs> Every time Lucian comes to terms with the fact that he is an uncle, he just taps the shot glass, takes a drink, goes back to living that reality. So that's <laughs> what the alchemy jug is for. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! Yeah. You just uh, shout the magic word, SHOTS, at the alchemy jug. <laughs> <laughs> and this little, like, shotgun just, thoom, just comes out, <laughs> fully loaded. Fully that's ready. Like, I mean, Good. that's the only thing more useful than mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Dahlia sits down on a log next to Ileana. <laughs> Did Ileana just leave? There yes, went Ileana. Yes, there's Ileana. Oh, Ileana's back. She sits down a log next to her. So are you sure you don't want to talk about it? It's not that big. It's not even that big of a deal. It's literally. No, it's, it, I mean. I understand how. <sighs> growing up, you have all these feelings. <laughs> looks at her like what they're just hard to they're hard to deal with and you know you understand I can help you talk about them woman to woman <laughs> woman to girl <laughs> yeah, it's just sitting here like I've literally only met the man once. Sometimes that's all it takes. What? <laughs> you know, in cheap <laughs> stories. Those uh, shouldn't believe them. He probably wants something from you. Maybe he's not worth your time. I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's just like this whiplash of emotions is not helping. I'd like to comment as the DM for a second. This episode officially has its title. It's Heat, Pray, Love. <laughs> okay, I'm going I'm to murder you. I'm so sorry. I have to interrupt, but I just realized as a druid, Dolly is the most qualified to give the birds and the bees to Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Should I segue into that? No. Yes, I'll segue into that. <laughs> Only if it's an actual talk about the biology of birds and bees and not the other thing. I'm gonna maybe try and talk about both. <laughs> Alright, continue, oh please. <laughs> how how old are you? 18? God, so young. So young. I'm surprised you even have a name yet. I got my name when I was, what, 70? Oh. <laughs> Ileana just looks horrifyingly confused. <laughs> You must have a lot of feelings. I understand. No, sit, listen. Men are so confusing. I, I didn't know. We did. Going on an adventure like this, especially when you're so young. She like sits closer. You're, you're so young. <laughs> I don't even know how you're dealing with all of this. It's overwhelming, honestly. Listen, there's just a lot. Have you been feeling strange lately physically? She have you been <laughs> hearing this guy gets really red in the face I'm like you're not about to do this oh god have you been having oh, strange thoughts oh, about gosh. about this man oh my gosh i'm just going to go bury myself in a hole 
<laughs> running running away will never solve your problems. You must face them like a woman who has taken <laughs> down bears with her bare hands. In fact, I, I, have you ever taken down a bear with your bare hands? If you haven't, then I must. Then we're doing that tomorrow. What? It, that, that's not related. That's not related. Polyan, why do you feel like you need to have this talk with me right now? Because you seem very conflicted. I listen. I understand what it seems like to uh, shit. <laughs> Being conflicted is something that can be overcome. It's it's not a problem. It's not a. It's, uh, not about the emotional part of it. It's about the hierarchy part of it. The hierarchy? If you're referring to the fact that he's a man, then you should put him in his place and step no, on him. it's not that. Well, then what could it possibly be? Everything runs differently in Waterdeep. Do you like it better there or here? I don't know. Well, we still have more time here, so I guess you can still figure it out. And if you end up liking it better here, then maybe you can convince... What is his name? Larrick? Maybe convince Larrick to stay here. I don't know. That's if you don't like him, whatever, you can find some other swine. Uh, it's at this exact moment, Ilyana, that uh, you hear a voice pop into your head, um, <laughs> and you hear Larry's voice as he says, Hello, Ilyana. It is- <laughs> Hello, Ilyana. It is Larrick Dashland. I've <laughs> had my mage friend cast a sending spell so that I may contact you again. Um... <laughs> <laughs> and then, let's see, he has three more words. He's gonna say, um, um, I've left Chult. Oh! Uh, and you, now this line is open, so you can respond to it within 25 words. Oh, gosh! Well, like, it's all you see, Leon, kind of, like, straighten up, and you... you you kind of like see your face, and then, um... <laughs> you just say, <laughs> oh gosh, she might like wave Thalia away for like a hot second, like, this is this, this, this. <laughs> She kind of like, looks confused and sits back like, okay, something's happening. <laughs> 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 a physical like change is occurring. <laughs> 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 But uh, she's going to take a breath and say, Oh, I see. Well, is there a chance you could tell me where I could send a letter to you? Letter to you. Um, cool. Three, three more words? No, it's, uh, it's 25. Yeah. Oh. 25 words? You want to repeat yeah. that for me? Yeah, it was 25 words, wasn't it? Yeah, let me count again. Repeat that whole message for me. Oh, God. Well, now I can't remember it. I had to think. <laughs> oh, well, is there a chance you could tell me where I could send a letter to you? Oh, it's less than that now. Yeah, you, you okay. still got, um... You had 13 words right there. So Can you I got, count? You got a good, like, 12 <laughs> words left. Okay. If you want to say anything else. It, or you can um, it there. It wouldn't be much, but I wanted to... Okay, it cuts like... off after wanted. Oh, okay! Oh! Ah! Fuck oh, you! No. 
Oh, no, that's wait, good. No, no, it didn't. No, it didn't. You said Sorry. 12. Sorry, I did say 12. I miscounted. Sorry. Yes, you, you, no, you have No, fine. A... Do it for dramatic effect. One, it, um... Yeah, one, it's really good. <laughs> wait, hey, wait, just ended up, hey, I wanted. Uh, and then uh, I say, I like, I'd like, say like, another. Like, I can't like, send a letter to you because I wanted blank. And it's like, oh, crap. Because I wanted. Eliana okay, doesn't know how really to. Good. Eliana is not good at saying words, so that makes sense. Another couple minutes pass before you hear the, the line opens again. And you hear Larry's voice say, Sorry, mage friend charges per casting. Um, <laughs> what a dick. Um, <laughs> uh, he says, I'm on a boat bound for Waterdeep. Mm -hmm. Can provide address for future correspondence. Um... Your boat should now be... No, your boat should be at port. Yay, the boat's at the port! Sad I don't get to see him again! You get a response to this too if you want. Okay. 25 Well, she says... Well, thank you for telling me about about this. It was very nice of you. I'll make sure to check on the boat. Three more words, if you want to use them. Um, thank you, sir. <laughs> there we go. Cool. All right. That's it. So you get no future messages from Larrick. Wheezes. <laughs> what happened, child? Why did you suddenly look like... You were going to pass out. Apparently he has a mage friend. Did he speak to you? Yes, he did. <laughs> what did he say? He's going back to Waterdeep. Oh. I mean, I'm not surprised Swine. he had to. <laughs> Dahlia! Typical. Well, did he say anything else? He said he'd let me know where I could send him a letter to, so... Well, that's something. Next time we get a chance, we can send a letter. Yeah. There! It's fine. He understood. And he messaged you back, so it's not like he was appalled by your first message. You seemed pretty torn up about it. I'd say this is a good start. <sighs> Maybe whenever we send a message, we can send him a, a trophy. Like, I don't know. What would, what would be good to send a parcel? A skull of a... A small... Carnivorous bird? I don't know. Um, what are the folk in Waterdeep like? Ah, uh, they don't like skulls. <laughs> hmm. Well, we'll have to keep thinking then. But I'll help you catch it. Uh, that I don't think will be necessary, but thank you, Thalia. <laughs> mm, of course. Well, good job. And I can help explain those physical changes later if you need. I'm good. As <laughs> <laughs> Ileana hurriedly walks off, let's cut over to the people who are not here, Ava and Mask. Okay, great. <laughs> How are you guys doing? What's up with you? Excellent. Uh, Ava's like kind of writing in her book like usual, but uh, she does like. Like, I, I, they're probably sitting in silence, most likely. Dear I, diary, it's mask. They, today, they're sitting in silence. They're absolutely sitting in silence, yes. Today we lost Hugh. It was fun. <laughs> dear, dear diary, I fucking hate newts and Hugh is dead. Red letter day, really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, they're sitting there and I was like, uh, hey, Matt? Mass just looks over. 
uh, are you okay? Like, after you went into that tunnel and nearly choked and it was very horrifying? Just figured I'd check and, you know, see if you were okay. Lucian healed me up. I was back to regular performance, so I would say yes. Yeah, but... That's not... Being sent off on your own isn't really something you like, even if you are very good at it. And, uh... I mean, we appreciate it, definitely. But, you know, your survival is more important than your use. You, you get that, right? Mask is silent. F. F. <laughs> Alright, well, I guess we'll do what we can to make sure you don't go into any more tunnels. You're wrong, by the way. About what? About me not liking being alone. I've done it almost my entire life, Ava. I'm quite used to it. That's, that's... That's... I'm sorry. I'm... I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm pretty bad with people. No, I've uh, noticed. Thanks. Thanks. Uh... <laughs> no, I mean... I guess it's not so much as... I guess I... I don't want you to think that we consider you expendable, because you're not. And he's once again silent. <sighs> Look, if I'm going to tell Eliana that she's not expendable, I may as well continue the trend and say you're not believe, even if you don't believe it. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I, I, unless you've got anything else, I think that's it. Ava's <laughs> just going to go back to her book, so... You're welcome to continue thinking that. Eh. <laughs> I think, you know, my mind's changed on a lot of things. Give it time. Assuming we don't all die in this incredibly stupid jungle. And then she goes back to continuing her adventures in writing really bad poetry. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Excellent. <laughs> and Mask, what do you go back to doing? Uh, Mask, well, now that he's heard that, he's gonna walk off a little bit, do some target practice by shooting the same tree a whole lot for several <laughs> hours. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm over here like, dear Mia... Today I tried to, uh, actually the past few days I've tried to be nice to people. I'm not sure if I'm very successful at it. At it. Actually, I think I might be really bad at it. Fuck it, I'm trying. That's cute <laughs> oh, that trying. she's writing a Mia. Yeah, her whole, the, whole, the whole book is just one giant, basically, letter mixed with poetry. Absolutely. Totally. Great. Well, y'all go back to doing your various things. Everyone comes back eventually. Y'all are decided to hang out, right? You're not going anywhere. You're just hanging out. Yeah, yeah we're hanging. Yeah. Out. Cool. Sounds great. Um, that was a very sassy way. I just said that. I didn't. <laughs> not my Sound intention. Right. You're yeah. hanging out. Oh my god. <laughs> um, yeah. I want to do something interesting real quick. Uh, I need to I actually. Um, I would like. Let me really interesting. This is a, this is a first for for Tomb of Annihilation. This is this is this is an audience moment. An audience can still do this, but I would like everybody, but mask, to remove their headphones or mute themselves on Discord, so that this Ooh. is only between Alex and I and the audience. Ooh, um, I, so, deafen? so so yeah, so you can deafen yourself, you can remove your headphones, you can keep an eye on our Google Hangout, or we can just I'll just at I'll just post I'll post in the Discord. Just at. 
Yeah, I'll post okay, in the Discord. I'll just wait Discord for that. when the yeah. headphones when it's yeah. when it's fine to listen again. But yeah, I would like everybody, and even if you're like, if you're on our hangout, look away. I don't want you to see my mouth moving or anything. So, yeah, you may go do that now. Okay. Uh, so, hi, hi, mask. Um, Hello. let me change the music very quickly. This is a moment that we just get to have between ourselves and the audience. This is going to happen. I will say. This is going to happen in the night. You are going to have... This is going to be when you are sleeping that night. Um, the music going. Nice and, nice, and, nice and ominous. So, Mask. You go to sleep. This is... And, and, and as the darkness kind of takes you, and you fall into your normal nightly slumber... You realize that though you are asleep, you are fully awake. Not lucid in a dream. Your consciousness is fully awake in this space between wakefulness and sleep. Um, and this is not something that has happened to you in a very long time. You are fully receiving a vision. Um, and being of celestial blood this is not unfamiliar but it's been a very long time since anything remotely similar to this has happened so you find yourself in in just a dark void not like floating or you don't there's no temperature it just it's nothingness but your feet are standing on the ground there is purchase in the nothingness beneath your feet. Um, and there's no wind blowing by. There's no... There's nothing. Other than just your consciousness around you. But despite this, you feel, for a lack of better words, you feel looked upon. You feel like you are being seen. And not in that weird way of somebody's watching me, that ominous feeling you get when you know there's no one around you, but you can feel eyes upon you. No, no, this is almost like you are standing before some sort of tribunal where there are eyes being cast down upon you. Um, if that's what it feels like. And it's not in the... It does not feel... Anxi There's no, like, anxiety from this. It's not like you're, like, you feel this a presence bearing down on you. You just feel looked upon. Simple as that. Um, and you're standing there. It's completely silent. Um, is there anything you do, or are you just waiting for something to happen? Uh, well, Mask is going to just kind of Look up, recognize the feeling, nod, brothers and sisters, it has been some time. How may I be of service? You feel the eyes of your celestial tribunal looking down upon you, the various cabal of guardian angels that are attached to your celestial bloodline as an ASMR. They have never communicated through words, usually only visions and feelings. Um, and they don't say anything, but you, they, there is a, a, a an emotional response from the tribunal that you cannot see um, through the void. It is this emotion of, you know, if I had to put it into words, it would be like a, a good to see you again kind of feeling like, you know. We bring you here before you and like, you know, you know, with our, you know, you know, just a feeling of reunion um, uh, from the celestial powers. However, there is a deeper sense of cordiality among them, that kind of emotion of one behaving when a greater power is present or, you know, just they're, they're acting more formal than their usual formality. Because that is when you feel there is an even greater set of eyes looking down upon you above all the other eyes that look down upon you. 
Um, and even through the void, you're not sure if your mind's eye is just picturing this or if this is actually a thing, but you swear that in the void you can make out in just the dark nothingness the shapes of these tall silhouetted celestial beings standing before you in council formation. Um, and then there's a, a great sense of movement, not like an earth-shaking rumble or a vast thing that catches you off guard, but you just feel that the void and space around you just moves itself with you in it, keeping you in place with it as it moves. And you realize that the void you occupy is not, in fact, nothingness. The void is the greater set of eyes that look down upon you. It is the being where all these other beings are residing within and now holding you within its great darkened and, uh, grasp. And this feeling of... Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a, a single word doesn't enter your head, but the emotional equivalent of it is something akin to genuflect, kneel, that kind of vibe. Not in like a dark, like, kneel before me. Just a immediate sense of kneel. Yeah, Mess does that, like, immediately. He probably would have done that, like, way sooner, actually. Well, yeah, but, like, in, in a more immediate, like, re respect of, like, yeah, kneel before the, the council. This is more of kneel. Like, this immediate sense of this is a, the, the big one, pal. As from the void, as you feel it move around you, there is a rustling of just matter of existence itself um you are in the space between spaces in this void and um this single female voice resonates in all directions um that says are you comfortable champion always my lady and as you say my lady this great the only visible thing for sure as this big face emerges in front of you through the darkness. This bone white porcelain mask of an impassive female face wreathed by feathers, black raven feathers, just appears from the void looking down upon you. And on above her brow, a crown of dark orbs of the opposite of light, one might say. Just orbs of darkness that crown her head um, as the Raven Queen looks down upon you. Um, and this voice of your god says to you, It has been a long time. There are has, reasons. There are reasons we come to you now. A great travesty, as you know, exists so very close to where you currently are, my champion. Your quest is far more menacing than it may seem. The puppet master at play is an abomination, the antithesis of who you are of what we are, of what I am. And it must be removed. You should not dally much longer. Do what you must to prepare. Gather what strength or forces you must. But your destination will lead to he who walks between worlds undying. The eternal one who should not be. He awaits you. He is behind this. I have chased him across oceans of time and realms you could not begin to imagine, O oh champion of mine. It is time for his to end. Do you understand my words? So it shall be, my lady. Then heed well what I am about to say to you. 
for he has a name, a name that strikes fear into the hearts of many, a name that is known throughout the plains of the multiverse, a name that is carved within the darkest halls and deadliest tombs all across existence. And the face, the great porcelain mask, leans ever closer to you, and you hear this name whispered from cold, icy breath that just touches all aspects of your flesh and from within your mind itself. It's a part of you, this voice, but also around you. The voice says, His name is Acererak. Go Master forth. Just gives a quick, subtle nod. Go forth. And complete your task, O oh, champion of mine, bearer of the mask, and the wielder. And there's like a long pause, and then a hoarse whisper, of seven secrets. You wake up the next morning. In a cold sweat. All right, we'll get everyone back in here. And, uh... All right, everybody can come back now as they file in one by one. Uh, welcome back, everybody. Um, yeah, every, everyone rest up. Um, so, Mask, you wake up with that in mind. And um, uh, two people have not come back yet, but unfortunately that is also where I'm going to say. And that's where we're ending tonight because <laughs> the audience, can, audience and Alex can deal with that cliffhanger. Oh, boy. <laughs> I um, love a cliffhanger from the show I'm in. Shitting. About. <laughs>